Hey, what's up all of you beautiful subscribers? Welcome back to the Jack Chapel Show. So what's on the docket today? We're going to be talking about Walmart, some big Walmart news. We're going to be talking about Amazon, taxes, Bitcoin, our stock market winners and losers, and some b general business news as well. So the very first thing I want to talk about today is this Walmart story though. So Walmart, their stock is down 2% today so why is this okay they released their earnings report last night and if you were just to look at the stock this morning you would have expected the earnings report to be bad maybe they missed their mark by a few percentage points maybe their revenues down maybe their net incomes down maybe something is down on that report well um that uh, as we've been seeing a lot this year that's not the case. They actually beat all of their estimates. Their revenue was up like 2.1% from, from this time last year, 1.7%. No, it's about 2.1% from this time last year. And keep in mind, so the revenue last quarter for quarter two for Walmart was expected to be $122 billion, $122.84 billion in one quarter, by the way. And they hit 123 billion, 123.36 billion. So they exceeded their their revenue estimates, their year over year growth. I mean, think about this: for a company whose revenue is 485.9 billion dollars per year, for them to be growing at a rate of 2.1 percent in a quarter, that's pretty good. All right, 2.1. I mean, so like they they beat their earnings estimates. Their online e-commerce revenue has grown, uh, I believe, 60%. Um, 60%, yeah. Last quarter, e-commerce sales climbed 63% compared with 29% growth in the prior quarter. So why is this? Why is this? Okay, so why did their e-commerce revenue just, you know, uh, just get blown out of the water. Why did it do so well? Get blown out of the water is the wrong uh, saying for that. But why? It's because they acquired an e-commerce marketplace called Jet.com, which uh, most people don't really know about. But Jet.com got bought by uh, but got bought by Walmart for three billion dollars. And you know, if you guys always talk about how like there's no hope if you want to start an e-commerce marketplace today, uh, Jet.com started in in 2014. It was founded in April of 2014, and it's only really been a, a decent marketplace for about a, a two years now. And so, I mean, this in three years, the founders of the, now saying that they, this company, Jet.com, actually raised $820 million. So the owners of the company, I'm guessing when they got bought out, don't really own much of it, maybe just a few percentage points. But I mean, so an e-commerce marketplace, that's the reason why Walmart's doing pretty well right now is because they acquired Jet uh, Jet.com here. Um, anyways, uh, back to Walmart here. And so this is just the crazy part of Wall Street, guys. I mean, so earnings, uh, they had earnings of $1.08 per share uh, uh, compared to a forecast of $1.07. I know that doesn't sound like much, but they still beat their estimates, right? They beat their estimates by one cent per share. Although, um, anyway, so revenue, uh, again, up. Like, I don't, I don't understand this. It's, I guess it's because they're not growing fast enough. That's what Walmart thinks. They're not growing fast enough to compete with the likes of Amazon. Um, but again, like this is something that's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, in my in my mind here, uh, Walmart's still growing as a company. Sure, Amazon's outpacing them right now, but I mean, they had good earnings report, good revenue, and it, the stock is still down today. So I, again, it's just, um, it's one of those things which is just very, very confusing to me in terms of how people react to an earnings report. And it's just like, we see this stuff with, I hate how people focus on like really minute details too of like just random things. Like remember, remember the, uh, I was talking about a few weeks ago about the uh, Janet Yellen from the Federal Reserve was giving her talk about whether to hike interest rates and people were literally, they break down the dialogue. They break down word by word certain things that are planned out in that conference. What she says and will base their investing from specific words, which is so, so stupid in my opinion. Just you kind of get, you should get the overall message. Like the overall message of this Walmart earnings report is that they're growing, all right? They're growing still, their earnings is up, their online retail is up because they acquired jet.com. I mean, things look like they're going well. With that interest rate from a uh, hike from Janet Yellen, the general thing was like, look, interest rates are, are gonna go up, all right, employment's okay. The economy is is looking okay, not great, but it's looking okay. And that's what you should have taken from the from the conference. What what she was saying, like the general view. And I mean, like, I mean, these days, I know I don't like. <laughs> I always say I don't like talking politics, and I don't. But like, when Trump was uh, recently, you know, um, 
uh, uh, talking out against, you know, like how this racism and all this stuff is terrible in Charlottesville. I think it's called Charlottesville, right? Charlottetown, something like that. And, uh, you know, people were just really, really pissed off because he didn't say the word specifically terrorist. People were so pissed off, you know, he, just because he didn't say that one word. And it was just like people overreact to some of these, like these detailed reports or these, they should get the overall message is what I'm trying to say here for anything in life. And like, you shouldn't be nitpicking certain things to kind of confirm or to confirm your thought process. And this is just something I guess for this Walmart earnings report here, it was probably they're just not keeping pace with Amazon is, is what I'm guessing here. That's why the stock is down, even though that this is still, if you were to look at this on paper, this is good, uh, their earnings report. So I mean, so that's the big story of Walmart today. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below of a few articles that you guys can look at for yourself. And uh, but yeah, we're going to move on here. We're going to move on to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, um, man, I left for, again, four or five days since the last business report. Walmart or sorry, Walmart. Bitcoin was at three thousand uh, dollars and about four. I think it was about three and a half thousand dollars. And in, in the past few days, past five days it's now at four thousand three hundred and fifty nine bucks now it's not had a good day down 1.5 percent today but i mean this is I, I i don't know what to think of this man i really don't know what to think of this i can't invest in this they can go from dropping 40 percent in a week to going up 25 percent the next week or look at this look at this hike here look at this hike in the past month or so i mean remember just a month ago it was at, you know, on July 16th, it was at under $2,000. It was at under $2,000. And so you've doubled your money if you invested in them July 19th. It's just, uh, it's really weird. And I'm kind of, I'm still, I, again, I can't invest in this. I know uh, people have probably made tons of money off this, but it's so, it's so speculatory right now that I can't do anything. Like I just, I, I cannot have that risk in, in my life. I cannot have that risk in my life. So um, what do you guys think about Bitcoin right now? Do you think that it's good investment, bad investment? Are you worried? Um, is this bubbly? Is it a bubble? Like that report that I talked about uh, about a month ago saying that we are at a Bitcoin bubble. Uh, I mean, I really don't like seeing spikes like this, but maybe, I mean, that's not sustainable over the course of years, of many years, but I mean, it could keep spiking for months. Maybe it plateaus, maybe it goes down. Who the hell knows? Who really knows at the end of the day what's going to happen with Bitcoin? So I want to talk about quickly actually interest rates here. Uh, I think I have, I don't know if I have this article up here. I might have uh, closed it down here. But so interest rates are, are, are near an all time low. This is just a fast fact. I'm not going to cover this too much here. So interest rates are at a near all time low. And I've always had this thought process about how interest rates, yeah, they're, they're kind of semi cyclical, but in the long run, they always go down because I look at charts um, that generally go from the, you know, 1979 and on for the most part here. But something I actually didn't know, and I always like to admit, like when I learned something for the first time, is looking at very long historical charts here dating. This one dates back to 1790. And it showed like in, I didn't know this seriously, after World War II, I, I would have expected, I just never thought about it, how right after World War II, interest rates were at 2%. Um, and which is still higher than today, obviously. Right now, they're, we're at, what are we at? 1.2%? What are we at? 1.25? I think we're at somewhere around there. But I always thought that like interest rates were always like 14, 15, 16%, you know, decades ago. Uh, but no, that was apparently uh, something that only happens like once every 50 years, it spikes that high. In the 80s, that's what we saw here. So I don't know. I just thought that that was interesting. What do you guys think? Did you guys know that? That interest rates were have been almost as low as they are now several times in history, but specifically uh, right after the war and during the war. I didn't know that. Um, so anyways, uh, we are going to move on here to the next topic, which is, da -da -da -da. by the way, it's gonna be a little bit of a short video today. Uh, we're gonna talk about Amazon because I talked about this a month ago too. So Trump's just been going after Amazon. For whatever reason, Trump's just going after Amazon saying they don't pay their taxes, they're bad for small businesses. Now, they are kind of bad for small businesses. Like he, he has that, that point's fair. But he tweeted out again uh, about how Amazon not paying taxes is damaging to retailers. And so that is something I've talked about before, how Amazon, they, in like six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, they weren't, uh, they didn't, they didn't collect sales tax. And so 
and they weren't paying taxes a lot in general because they were losing money as a company. But this is just something where Trump, seriously, if you dig into it for, for even two minutes, you can find that in most states in the United States, they collect sales tax and pay those out. And they actually do pay their taxes. Last year, they paid $412 million in taxes on a net profit of, what was that last year? It was, uh, I guess, I guess I can do this in my head here. They paid, paid what, 13% in taxes last year, on average 13%, might be more, might be less. So, I mean, on a net profit of a few billion dollars, they paid 400 million in taxes. I mean, they're still somehow avoiding taxes. I don't really know how they're doing that. Um, I didn't dig into that too much here, but they, they paid their taxes. They paid 13% rate on average, I think. That's what this article said here. This is one source, so uh, don't trust this, even though this is the New York Times and they're usually somewhat reputable with this, with business stuff specifically. Um, but I mean, Amazon pays its taxes. Sure, they're bad for they're bad for business, but the fact that you, here's the deal. Like, again, I know I, I'm not a Trump defender. I'm not a Trump supporter. I just kind of look at stuff objectively. I think a lot of the stuff he's done is stupid. I also do think that he gets a lot more hate than than, than he probably deserves for just no reason. Um, but this is one of those things where he's just stupid. Like, you just dig into it for one minute. They pay, he pays, they pay taxes. I mean, they, they pay taxes. So... Um, Again, just one of those things that uh, Trump just needs to... D he also... I think that one of the reasons why he goes after Amazon is because the uh, Jeff Bezos owes the wa owns the Washington Post, right? I think it's the Washington Post. And they rip on Trump a fair bit. And so he... Uh, Trump doesn't like that. And so he just rips anything that Jeff Bezos does now. That, that's just my, my back theory to all of this is that he just doesn't like Jeff Bezos. Um, so that's why he's ripping on them. <laughs> It's kind of funny that he does that stuff. Anyways, we that's my theory. What do you guys think about that theory, by the way? Do you think that that's true? Because he does talk about, whenever he talks about the Washington Post, I mean, Trump does go, you know, this is the Amazon Washington Post, fake news, whatever. He always says the Amazon Washington Post um, or the Bezos Washington Post. So I think that he's just picking on Amazon because um, it's Jeff Bezos owns it. And um, he just doesn't like that the Washington Post rips him all the time. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about uh, our stock market winners and losers. We're going to talk about L Brands. For those of you that don't know who that is, that is um, they own Victoria's Secret. I think they don't own Bath and Body Works, do they? I don't know if they own Bath. I just know them as the Victoria's Secret company, but maybe they own um, maybe they own Bath and Body Works here. But they're down 10.7%. And so this is... Uh, I mean, this is for kind of good reasons. Um, they they did kind of beat earnings reports, but I believe that their year over year earnings have been down as a whole, and so they beat estimates. But their um, it's still a bleak future. And that's what I could get from this. I read a few articles on this. One of them was actually here. Um, but yeah, they're one of the stock market losers today, down 10.7%. Now, obviously, still a few hours to go, so we can see what happens here. But uh, I don't expect too much change to within a few percentage points here. So um, anyways, this is also another thing I want to talk about, luxury brands. So I always thought that um, luxury brands are some of the things that could potentially survive the Amazon effect. Um so, you know, whatever it is, high-end women's fashion like Victoria's Secret could be Zara for guys or I don't know. Zara is Zara. I'm guessing Zara is a big brand for girls, too. Um, but I just that's who I bought my suit from. One of my suits from Zara. So um, I'm talking like higher end brands. But I guess, you know what? That's not true, though, because I mean, all I've talked about recently how a bunch of the losers have been high end fashion brands specifically. But is it because of the company itself or is it because of the macroeconomic trend of people not wanting to go into the to buy luxury stuff or just buying stuff online? I mean, I don't really know. So what do you guys think about that, actually? Do you guys think that um, luxury brands can be somewhat immune to this Amazon effect? Or do you think that it, everything's just being affected by online retail? I don't know. I think that a luxury is still going to be okay. It's just... Um, I, I, it's weird to think about this. Maybe they're going to go. I don't really know. I don't really know at the end of the day. I'm just interested to see what happens here. So we're going to talk about another, uh, probably our last stock market loser. By the way, there hasn't been a lot of winners today. So, I mean, we're not really even going to talk about winners. Uh, our other stock market loser. So we had Walmart, L Brands, and we're talking about Cisco down 4%. Uh, again, it's weak revenue forecast. So 
Um, again, but Cisco, <laughs> they beat their revenue here, but their future revenue is not supposed to be good. So again, this is one of those things here where they did okay on their earnings, but um, on their earnings report and their you know earnings and revenue and so on. But I guess people just don't believe in this company. By the way, a tech company that pays a 3.7% dividend here, not too shabby. Uh, let's see how Cisco stock has been historically here. So I guess that they were part of the tech bubble. So ignoring the tech bubble, they've been, a, I guess, a solid stock over the past 10 or 15 or so years. Um, actually, they are, if you look at this number here from 2002 to 2017, so 15 years, they've averaged about 11% return per year, which is like, that's pretty good, including the recession. 11% per year for a company that was already big at the time. I mean, that's actually pretty good. Um, also, I just want to actually look at the historical... Has Victoria's Secret, has L Brains been doing well historically? I guess that they spiked in the 90s here and then they spiked again. Oh, so they spiked again two years ago. So again, they're still near their, I mean, um, in terms of the stock value, uh, the stock value is still okay for Victoria's Secret and L Brains here. So they're going to be fine. Um, anyways, I think that's going to wrap this up here. Sorry, this is my return to the business news. It's been a while. I've been coding pretty damn hard recently. And so I just thought I'd uh, get this. I think what I'm going to start doing now is do the reason why I haven't been doing these videos um, last week is actually because um, I've been saying I'm um, too much. God damn it. Uh, the reason why I haven't been doing these these videos so much in the past week in, the, in this podcast is because uh, I've been getting into work and I've just been coding and then I just lose track of time and uh, I'll start coding at 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning whenever I roll in here sometimes earlier, sometimes eight o'clock. And then I'll just, I'll get into the coding habit and then I'll look up and it's 8 PM and it's, it's too late for me to, you know, I'll be up till, uh, midnight. The video will be out by midnight for my business news. If I do that. So that's, I'm thinking maybe I, in the morning, I just come in, I talk about business news. Um, even if it's at eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock, and then I'll go to, uh, do coding after that, because normally I film these videos at like one, two, I guess 1 PM, 2 PM. Usually I do them at around 3 PM, but I think I'm going to do it earlier now so I can um, have a better functional day. So anyways, I think that's going to wrap this video up and, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Remember to check out my stock market program in the link down below. You can learn how to set up your account, learn it, learn what I've invested in the past few months and so on. So thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people and I'll see you guys in the next video.